Your heart needs to be strong to keep up. Flora, for a strong heart today. Hello and welcome to the show. Generations of us have grown up with dieting parents, teachers and relatives who have instilled in us the belief that fat is the enemy as they reach for fat-free and flavorless foods in an effort to lose weight. But we've been fed a lie, misled by our loved ones, because research now shows that the total amount of fat in your diet isn't linked with weight or disease. What really matters is the type of fat and the total calories in your diet. Bad fats increase your risk of heart disease, and good fats are not just neutral, they actually lower your risk of heart disease. Keep in mind that most foods contain a mix of fats, so the key to a healthy diet is to choose foods that are higher in good fats than bad fats, and that do not contain any trans fats. Now, the obvious question you're asking then is, what are good fats and what are bad fats? Christelle, what do you say about that? So, Michael, basically the bad fats are your saturated fats and trans fatty acids. Um, you basically found them from animal fats and products made from that. So, a lot of times you find it in dairy, cakes, pastries, biscuits. Now, the saturated fats um, actually increase your bad cholesterol. Right. Trans fats not only increase your bad cholesterol, but they also decrease the good cholesterol. Okay, so now let's focus on the positive side. The positive <laughs> side, the good fats, they are your monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. Now the polyunsaturated fats we also call omega-3 and 6. And the interesting thing is that they are actually essential fats because your body cannot make them itself. So you have to get that from your food. And as you mentioned, uh, research has shown that if you replace the saturated fats with omega-3 and 6, it actually decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease. How do we know what foods can contain what fats. So that is why we have tried to actually very visually show in front of us today. So if you look at a test tube, imagine this is 100 grams of the product in front of it. All right. The blue actually represents water, moisture. Okay. The white part represents the bad saturated and trans fats. And the yellow part is actually the good fats. They can be either mono or polyunsaturated fats. All right, so more yellow, the better. Huh? The more yellow, the better. The That's less it. white, the better. Okay. Now, I mean, just having a look at something like... Butter. Butter. Ouch. Um, if you look at the amount of bad fats versus good, and if you compare that with something like olive oil, lots of yellow, that's mm. what we want to see. Sunflower oil, For a moment, let me just ask our audience. Okay, I wish I hadn't told you that, but how many of you use margarine? Let's see some hands. All right. And how many use butter? <laughs> you see, when I asked earlier, it was completely different. You know, now that you know, all right, keep going, Christelle. Okay, and then obviously, then when we have a look at the type of soft type margarines, you'll see a little bit more water because these are overall lower in total fat. Okay, right. and also much more of the yellow good fats compared to the white saturated fats. So mostly your liquid vegetable oils are high in good fats and low in saturated fats. That's a rough rule, isn't it? The that's solid a, fats are not a, great, the liquid fats are better. That's a rough rule. The okay. one thing, however, the tropical vegetable oils, like coconut oil, mm. to our right here, My word. very high in saturated fat compared okay. to good fats. Look, it so looks the like tropical Vaseline, oils, so, you know. yeah, I think, again, a rule of thumb is usually at room temperature it's quite solid. Okay. Okay. So if the if the vegetable fat is quite solid at room temperature, it's usually an indication that the that there's quite high amounts of saturated fat to give okay. it that solid structure. Uh -huh. Okay. So you talked about brick margarine here, which is obviously different to your softer margarine. Yes. It's got a whole lot of bad fats. So brick margarine usually has more saturated fats to give it that structure because it's okay. not set in a tub. Okay. But if you would compare this all the way <coughs> to that you can still see quite a big difference. Wow. And, and a lot of brick margarines these days, read labels, can also be trans fat free. Okay. We butter has about 6% trans fat. All right, so let's talk about that because the butter margarine debate is not a new one. We all believe we found a healthier alternative to butter when margarine came along, as the majority of margarines contain healthy fats and no cholesterol because they're made from vegetable oil compared to butter, which contains high amounts of cholesterol and saturated fat. But then we discovered that some margarines contained trans fatty acids and all the bets were off. So what's the consensus today? Bottom line, Christelle. So today, um, science has evolved 
So since the 1990s, since we've known that trans fat is bad, it has been removed out of most margarines. Okay. Again, make sure you check the label. A lot of the main players um, would actually have reduced their Read trans fat. Read your labels. Labels, Let, labels, Let's labels. talk about amount quickly, very briefly. Yeah. Are you saying a small amount, given the fact that good fats are good for your heart, a small amount of margarine can make a big difference? It can. So if you take, let's say we use 20 grams of margarine a day, which is I mean, a little bit less than a teaspoon on four teaspoon of margarine on four slices of bread. That would be 20 grams. If you replace that 20 grams of butter with 20 grams of a soft type margarine, that could actually reduce your cholesterol by about three percent. Sounds maybe small, but that actually results in a three to six percent reduction in cardiovascular disease. Again, mm, what does that really mean? But it's really about the small differences that you can make that eventually can have a big impact. If you tell me I can do something really small and actually reduce my risk of heart disease, I'm going to do it. Absolutely, so, so am I. It might be small, but it really is actually a significant difference. It all adds significant up. Change. Little small differences. Yeah. So here's the bottom line. Appropriate use of idiom when it comes to fat, don't you think? The bottom line. Stop thinking low fat or no fat and start thinking good fat. And here are some practical steps on how to increase good fat intake. Listen carefully. Use liquid plant oils for cooking and baking, which are rich in heart healthy, unsaturated fats. Ditch the trans fat. Read the label to find foods that are trans fat free. Switch from butter to soft margarine. Choose a product that has zero grams of trans fat and scan the ingredient list to make sure it does not contain partially hydrogenated oils. Fourthly, cut back on red meat and dairy products, which are high in saturated fat. And then finally, eat at least one good source of omega-3 fats each day. So there you have it, another myth busted. Fat is good for me as long as it's good fat. Your heart needs to be strong to keep up. Flora, for a strong heart today.